welcome to Mrs Brown's summer holidays um, and I am here in beautiful Devon um, sun somewhere over there sea just over there and lots and lots of sand um, because I um, beautiful Devon um, am now on the largest sand dune ecosystem in the country so this is Saunton Sands, Brunton Burrows, two parts of the same thing really. Um, and it's a massive, massive area um, of sand, sand dunes. I am sat currently rather uncomfortably on some of the first dunes, the embryo dunes and sort of row number one um, on some quite prickly marum grass. Um, so sand dunes, um, as I'm sure you all know, are formed by the wind blowing lots of this lovely sand onto the shore. So to actually get sand dunes to form, you need to have a wide expanse of sandy beach, just over there, um, quite a large tidal range because the sea has to be able to go out far enough for the sand to dry and the wind to be able to blow it on shore. To get your first dune, you've got to have something there, some kind of twig, a little trigger point to start gathering the sand around it. And after that, it's all down to kind of different ecosystems and succession and the special plants that you get living here. Because actually, your common garden plants are not going to want to live on these sand dunes. Um, marum grass, if you look here, this is marum grass, looks like normal grass, a little bit spikier, but pretty special. Um, it's got to be able to be adapted to live in sand. So this sand um, blows away in the wind, it's really not very stable, um, water drains straight through it and there's no nutrients in it and actually it's probably a bit salty. So most plants are going to be killed by it but marum grass loves it. It starts to grow, it starts to hold the sand together with its roots. You can see some roots starting to poke out, a little bit of dead stuff. Um, holds it all together with its roots and allows other plants to start moving in. Um, other plants just there. If I was an excellent biologist I'd be able to tell you what that is but I don't know. Google it. Um, so these are the embryo genes and you can see how loads of it is still some bare sand here. Um, marum grass is starting to move in and starting to bring the sand together but it can't compete against all of these sort of wind erosion and actually at this part of the beach quite a lot of um, human footpath type erosion. People like me coming for a climb up onto the dunes. Um, Saunton's a pretty nice beach, quite a lot of good surf not so much today because it's not been so windy the last couple of days um, but normally it's it's got quite a lot of surf on it so lots of people come up and climb into these dunes um, but you can start to see the roots of the marum grass just bringing it all together but there's no soil yet which is why the marum grass is the only really thing that can grow here. So I bought from the embryo dune which was over that way, um, past sort of the yellow dunes where you start to get sort of a bit more stabilisation and colonisation um, and through to where sort of behind me is more of the grey dunes. So they're starting to see um, a bit of soil layer, sort of that organic matter rotting down, creating some soil um, so that different plants can move in. And of course we call that succession. So our magic marum grass that can live in a sandy soil that's got no, well just sand, not even soil, no nutrients, it's really salty, um, but marum grass is really specially adapted. But as marum grass grows, it almost makes itself redundant. It brings the soil together, it creates the soil, it removes some of the salt and it holds that sand together. And so actually marum grass doesn't like living there anymore. And other plant species are able to move in and colonise um, in that succession. Um, and in Bournton Burrows, which is where I am, there's over 400 different plant species. Um, that's a lot. So they've protected the area. Um, it's a site of special scientific interest. It's got all sorts of other acronyms that mean that it's pretty special um, and they've tried to protect it. So um, over there is all the sort of much more stabilised genes over there. You can start to see actually different kinds of green which obviously means that there's lots and lots of different types of plant species over there and eventually if succession is allowed to continue naturally without any human interference um, if we were to go back take like a transect all the way back it would become heathland and woodland which is the climax community of the UK naturally all of our land should be heathland or woodland but we of course um, use it for other things um, like ice cream shops And that is all from beautiful, beautiful Devon on this fine sunny morning. Um, now you're practically an expert on sand dune ecosystems. Um, Samus is, silent P if you will. Um, um, 
and it is time here for an ice cream um, I'm gonna go and get something I think toffee fudge ice cream based um, have a lovely rest of your day enjoy